Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Lubitsch. All right, Doctor. I've just come from the hospital. The tests are in, and you're pregnant. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Did you hear that, honey? Call me if I can be of any help with your decision. Yeah, I'll do that, Doctor. Thanks very much. Another baby. Oh. I couldn't bear it. I just couldn't. No way in the world we're going to lose this child. Look. First of all, the odds are four to one against there being any problem at all this time. Honey, even if the worst happened and the baby was born with no immunities this time, we're ready. I mean, immunologists like Dr. Gunther, they know how to save these children now. But, but how can we make a decision like that? For another human being. I mean, what if... Oh, Johnny, do you think we could live with it? Oh. <laughs> there were never two people in the world more meant to be parents than you and me. God knows that. I want to believe that. Oh, I want to believe that. A baby. We're going to have a baby. If you'd like to say something to your wife before... Hello, Mrs. Lubitsch. I just wanted to say, um... I love you. Conditioning ducts and the heat vents closed, please. And no movement while the air settles. Anybody down there planning on having an itch, please scratch it now. Not later, please. Dr. Gunther, do we have to have all these people here? <laughs> May we please clear the theater? I'm sorry, please try to understand we're private people. Begin the cesarean. Baby, he is. Look at those blue eyes. Hey, 
It's your daddy. <laughs> I think he knows me. How were the tests? Mr. and Mrs. Lubitsch, you was born exactly like your first son, with no amenities whatsoever. But he's alive. How long does he have to stay in this? There's no way to know. Until we discover a treatment, until he develops an immune system of his own, he'll have to remain in his protected environment. Surely you can give us some kind of a prediction. I mean, are we talking about days or weeks or months? Years. Excuse me? Mr. Lubitsch, you may as well have it straight. We could get lucky, or your son could be here with us for the remainder of his life. What for? Hey, Nick. What's the matter? Oh, I hate seeing that little girl near the... I'm always looking at her. <laughs> oh, you almost fell out. Did you move that? Kind of sorry they moved next door. I want my baby. Nicky, look. Suppose we could devise some way of, of transporting him safely. And we could get them to go on paying for it and, and manage the million and one other things we'd have to. The sterilization of the food and the toys and the equipment. I, I don't think you realize what we'd be getting ourselves into if we did bring him home. Do you? No. You stay home and get some rest. I'll give him a big hug for both of us, okay? Tony's mommy. Surprised to see me? No. No? 
What about you, short stuff? Huh? Are you surprised to see Mommy? Yeah. You are? Oh, I bet I can yeah. do something fun to you. I bet I can tickle <laughs> you and make you giggle. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Oh. Do you know how much your Mommy and Daddy love you? Do you? Do you really? Look at that. Do you know how much Mommy and Daddy love you? Do you? And how much we want you all to ourselves. Thank you. Oh. I love you. Oh. Baby, I want to get him again. I want to get him again. Oh, you want to give me another kiss? Give me a kiss. Up. We got the microphone. Are we rolling? Pick up the ambulance. Little Todd Lubitsch, a child who has never felt his parents' touch except for the walls of his plastic bubble, and who may not for years to come, is finally coming home for the first time today. Doctor, uh, please, Mr. everybody, we, we appreciate your interest, but it's exactly what we're trying to get away from. Tight, you have a nice ride? Here you go. Would you back up, everybody, please? Mrs. Lubitsch, how do you mind backing up just a little bit? Oh, my, I didn't realize he was so big. Mm. Isn't he adorable? Gina, come on back here. Okay. Well, you have to live in that thing for very long. Please, you no, know. no pictures. No. What is it like, Mrs. Lubitsch? Look, Never I've asked you nicely. Three times now, will you just leave us be? Um, Mr. Lubitsch, won't you come out again and, and give us a... Take one more step and I'm going to knock your damn head off. Now, get out of here. Come on. All of it. Back up. Champagne okay. <laughs> Do you realize how long it's been? Daddy's gonna lift you up. Come on, you gotta spit it out, baby. Spit it out. Spit it up. 
Any more, honey. Spit it up, Tony. Spit it up. Spit. Come on, Tony. Come on. Come on. Spit it up. Spit it up. Come on. Come on. Spit it up. Come on. Come on. Spit it up. Spit it up. Come on. Come on. Spit it up. number's not listed. Well, we were just waiting for the proper time to say hello. I'm Pete Biggs, my wife Martha, and uh, daughter Gina. We live right next door there. Yes, I know. I should have been the one to welcome you into the neighborhood, but... Uh, yeah. It's a welcome home present for your little boy. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, please come in. Uh, I'm sorry, but I haven't been that friendly, but we just don't have that many visitors. There, that's good, Daddy. Now put the blue one here. See if you can stack another blue one on. Oh, you're gonna put it up there, huh? Honey. Oops, oops. Here, try the... Honey, look who's that's here. Good. The bigs from next door have come over to welcome Todd home. Oh, look, Toddy. Hey, Toddy. Yes, Todd. Toddy, look over there. Toddy, look who's here. This is Gina. Come say hello to Gina. Oh, yeah. Gina's brought you a present which Daddy's going to sterilize. Oh, yeah. Hey, okay. come on over here, Go Gina. Sterilize. Toddy. Oh. Come on, say hi to Gina. Come on, Toddy. Yeah. Oh. Let me go! Let me go! Oh, he's not hurting you. He's just playing with you. <laughs> this is your playhouse. Can I come in? Can I? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Gina, what do you want to do? I don't know. Go down the dock? Yeah, it must be real weird living right next door to that kid. Oh, no, not really. Like, I hardly ever see him except for birthdays and stuff. Yeah. Half the time he's at the hospital anyway. <laughs> Come on. Hey, the bird man, watching television, you know? He never comes out of his room. Do you have any friends? Mm -mm. Just old people. Like friends of his parents. A bunch of doctors that come over. And some minister or something comes over once in a while. But no kids or anything. Oh, he has this little pet germ-free mouse, too. Don't you ever wonder what it's like in there? I mean... Be all by yourself like that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But he's weird, you know? Like, I'm surprised he isn't looking at us right now. Every time I look up there, he's looking right at me. side of Skylab's multiple docking adapter section. The antenna is used to measure irregularities in ground temperatures. 
and the shape of the Earth. Performing like an acrobatic team, they worked for three hours on the faulty antenna until it was finally free enough to do most of its programmed Earth scanning job. Earlier today, after the astronauts docked their command module with Skylab, they settled in and started their housekeeping chores. After a rest period of two hours, they had their first meal in Skylab. Hello, Mickey. Good afternoon, Ernie. Please come in. Ernie? Look who's here to see you. Hello, Todd. Good afternoon, Ernie. And how are we feeling today? driving out here today, instead of waiting for your monthly checkup, uh, there's some news I think you might like to hear. Queens and check, Ernie. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, a doctor in Tokyo believes he may have found a treatment that might stimulate the development of the humoral and cellular antibodies. What kind of research has he done? Mm, so far, not too extensive. But by the middle of next Good year... Good news, Ernie. Keep me posted, will you? You really got it made, haven't you? Why do you say that? Because it got the best excuse ever devised by anybody to avoid growing up. I'm growing up, Ernie. Yes. Sometimes you're like an old man. And other times you're like a newborn baby. What does that mean? Why do you use that intercom when you don't need to? To give you a feeling of power over us? Is this your way of getting back at us? Oh, you're angry at me today, aren't you, Ernie? Yes, you're right, I am. Well, look, Ernie, you don't know any more than you did in the beginning, do you? I mean, so why should I care about what's going on out there? Why should I care about anything that's going on out there? Because there may be a cure at any time. The doctor in Tokyo, your own body. Oh, bull. You know, I'm not so unhappy in here as all of you think. Really. I'll see you, Todd. circuit television system. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And they want to know if you would like to use it to monitor some classes in the high school. What classes? Any classes you want. Come on, you're not afraid to test that brain of yours against the other kids, are you? No. Well? Honey, if it's too abrupt a step for you right now, that's okay. I didn't mean to sound as if I was pushing, but I could... I just happened to know that, that doctor that Ernie was talking about last week. You know, the one from Tokyo? Well, we haven't heard anything about him yet, honey. But there is a hematologist in Finland. That's Finland. I gotta think got... about that that school thing. May I please be excused? Of course,
What's your neighbor, the boy in the bubble? He's gonna monitor some classes on TV, and he chose our homework. He did? Yeah, come on. Tom, get off my feet. <laughs> Hey, Gina, your true love has found you. <laughs> Todd, can you hear me? Hi, Dad. Hi. I want you to meet your homeroom teacher. This is Mr. Brister. Good morning, Todd. Uh, would you like to say something to the class before we begin? Hi, everybody. So, if the Truman administration was the fair deal, and the Kennedy administration the new frontier, and the Johnson administration called itself the Great Society, what was the Roosevelt administration? Tom Schuster? Gwen? <laughs> Who's making that sound? <laughs> Gina Biggs? Uh, sorry, Mr. Brewster, I, I didn't read the chapter. Todd? The New Deal. Good. Now. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> All right. This has gone far enough. Unless every one of you want to be sent down to the principal's office, you'll cut it out right now. <laughs> take him to and from the hospital in that small bubble. Why, uh, why don't they ever carry him outside or down to the beach or something? Well, they've been suggesting it for years, but Todd won't have any part of it. He says it'll make him feel like a freak being put on display. Gina, go over to the Lubitsch's. Ask Todd if he'd like to come to the 4th of July party at the beach. Well, why don't you just call his parents or something? I want it to come from you. All right, I'll try. Uh, Missy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mrs. Lubitsch. Hi, Dana. Uh, is Todd home? Is Todd home? <sighs> yes, Todd is home. Go on up and thank you. <laughs>
surprised to see me? Well, aren't you going to say something? Like, hi? Hi. Hey, you know, I've always wondered about this. What's that? How come this part is open? I mean, don't germs get in? Oh, well, you see, behind this wall, there's lots of air vents that constantly blow out all the air so that so the germs won't get in. See this blind down here? I can't walk past it. No kidding. No. You mean I couldn't put my foot over that line? No. Your germs get in. <laughs> yeah. Hey Todd, my mom said that you've never even been sick or anything, not even a cold. Is that is that true? Yeah. How you like that? Wow. So, when are you supposed to get out? Oh, I don't know. Keep on looking for treatments. But they've been looking for them all my life. But my immunities keep on building up, I know that. So, even if they don't find a treatment, you'll get out someday, right? Yeah, someday. Well, um, the reason I'm here is, um, I wanted to invite you to the 4th of July party at the beach. Um, if you can't make it, you know, everybody will understand, but at least you know that we wanted you to come. Well, hope you can make it. Yeah, okay. Let's head out. Okay. Pete, let's put it over here by the rock. There's an outlet over there. Okay. Hey, Fred, could you give us a hand putting Todd down here? Yeah, could you give him either side here? Okay. Got it? I'm going to release it right now. Okay. There we go. Easy. There we go. Okay, let me get the. Uh, Watch Honey, you want to turn the switch on? Okay. okay. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July, son. Okay, where's food? you feed them every morning. And, and I love to watch you ride them. You always talk like that. I love this, I love that. But I do, I really do. Yeah, but I mean, you shouldn't tell people. Well, why not? Because people think you're dumb. Oh. <laughs> so you like my horse, huh? Well, maybe I'll let you ride him when you get out. Are you really, Gina? <laughs> See you later. Hi. 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 
Let's hold hands. What for? I just like to hold hands with you. Don't you know? When two people like each other, especially a boy and a girl, they like to hold hands. Jean. Yes? You really like me. <laughs> we'll hold my hand and find out. You won't be staying in the old part of the hospital anymore, Todd. You'll be staying here in the new Laminar Airflow Center. Because of what we've learned through cases like yours, we're now treating cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy, leukemia patients, all kinds of people, young and old, who've developed immune deficiencies like yourself for one reason or another. I've taken the liberty of tentatively selecting your roommate. A roommate? But if you're unhappy, I'm sure something can be arranged. Todd Lubitsch, meet Roy Slater. Hi. Well, I'll leave you two fellas to get to know each other. Here you've been in one of these things all your life. What's that been like? Me, I've been in here a couple of months, and I don't know. I sure miss a lot of things. What's the matter with you? Tumor. So why are you in one of these things? The chemotherapy kills off all my immunities. You know, I'm really glad I got someone to talk to now. I mean, they tried me with a couple of others before, but you're the first one who's even close to my age. Sure hope we can become friends. Hey! Hey, why don't you talk to me? 
I have so many things I want to ask you. Just let me ask you one question, okay? Okay. What do you do to start liking it? Todd? Aren't you gonna answer me? You said I could ask you one question. Yeah, well, I didn't say I'd answer it. are building up. But who knows, I may never get out of this damn thing. If I was never gonna get out of here, I don't think I'd keep going on, you know? Easy, you can do it easy. You know what really bugs me? What? And when they discovered the tumor, I was too young for girls, you know? Yeah. But now that I'm old enough, I can't do anything about it. Sometimes I just get so... I can't stand it. And I think of all my friends out there going to drive-ins and making out and getting all that action. You know, the first thing I'm gonna do when I get out of here is get me, get myself a hooker. Wouldn't you be afraid of all the germs? Germs? I want the germs. I want to be dirty, really dirty, you know? I want to grow my hair real long and have a beard and a mustache. And I want to make it with everything that walks. Roy. Yeah? Do you ever, um... Do you ever, you know... All the time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Elsewhere in the news, astronaut Buzz Aldrin visits young Todd Lupich, the boy who has grown up inside a plastic bubble. That's Todd! I want to see this. Hold on. He's coming home next week. So what? Shh. Hi, Todd. You're Buzz Aldrin, aren't you? The man who walked on the moon. Oh, God, I don't believe this. You know, I've been looking forward to meeting you, Todd. I hear you have the record for the longest time in a command module. Yeah, I guess so. I got a little something for you, too. To Todd, champion spaceman on Earth, Buzz Aldrin. Thank you. Hey, you spent some time in one of these things, didn't you, right after the moon flight? Something very much like it, Todd. We were in germ control quarters for several weeks. Well, what was it like for you? The thing I remember most was the loss of freedom. You know, I felt like being in a fishbowl. Yeah, I know what you mean. Todd Lubitsch, the boy who has spent his life in a plastic bubble. <laughs> no, Tom, um, my parents are going to be home in a minute, OK? What is it with you and that freak? He's my next door neighbor. We grew up together. Is anything wrong with that? Don't call him a freak. I think you're turning on to him. Oh, Tom, you're such an idiot. How long have I had lived next to him? Twelve years? I've probably spoken to him maybe a dozen times at the most. 
Every year I got an invitation to his birthday party. And every year I went. I was the only one there. Except for his parents. It's the only time I ever saw him. Just once a year. Except for the 4th of July. Mr. Lubitsch? You know, what is it, Gina? I'm in a big rush. I hear Todd's gonna monitor some classes again this yeah, year. Yeah, that's why I'm rushing. I got books to get at the library and supplies to pick up for the hey, store's listen, group. I can do all that for you if you want. What's the catch, Gina? Well, the main thing is, uh, I feel bad about what happened, and I'd like to help out. And, uh, the other thing is, I, I'm broke and I could really use the money. Okay. That's a deal. I brought you the books and supplies that you needed. And your homework's in there, too. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, um, if you want me to bring any classwork with me to school in the morning, just, um, have your mom leave it on the front porch, and I'll pick it up on my way. to say. Well, I thought a lot about, um, what happened last 4th of July. And I wanted to make it up to you somehow. And when I saw your father at school today, well, well, I was going to do it for nothing. But then another part of me said, well, <laughs> I understand. You're not mad at me anymore? Hey, um, does that Mr. Brister look as old in person as he does on television? <laughs> oh, Mr. Brister. God, I hate that guy. Yeah, me too. Hey, how come you're never wearing anything except shorts? Because it's so warm in here. Really, Todd? I mean, when I come over, the least you can do is put on some clothes. <laughs> How long has it been since you've had a shower? Oh, I can't have showers. And bad Zer major production. You should see it takes a couple hours just to sterilize the water. It must stink in there. Oh, no, no, you're wrong. No, no germs, no smell. I don't know, Todd. 
I mean, it's just the principle of the thing, you know? Well, hasta mañana. Thus, despite Wilson's stand on the League of Nations, Congress had voted against the entry of the United States. America now embraced a policy of isolationism, focusing her attentions inward on domestic concerns, thereby pursuing a course of action which was ultimately to pave the way for World War II. For tomorrow, we will read chapters four, five, I wish you wouldn't look at me like that. Look, I didn't come yesterday because I couldn't. Look, to begin with, Mr. Goodwin made me stay after class to rewrite that term paper for English Lit. And then I got called down to the principal's office for a nice little talking to. And then when I got home, my parents... Gina, you there. don't have to lie to me. I'm not lying to you, and stop using that thing. It hurts my ears. You can go now, Gina. I'm not your slave, Todd, so don't give me orders. You're just like everybody else. Nobody ever believes me. I'm flunking out of school. That's how come I had to stay. The only course I have higher than a D is in art. Oh, I, I didn't know that, Gina. Well, now you do. And you can forget about me coming over anymore. Since everyone else thinks I'm letting them down, the last thing I need is to get the same garbage from you. Gina, I'm sorry. Maybe I could help you. How? I can explain things better than those dumb teachers. I can teach you how to really concentrate. Do that? Sure. Hey, what's, what's my father paying you? Dollar an hour. Well, that's how much I charge. Tina, you can see my rates. They're right over here. <laughs> okay, it's a deal. Todd, how do you like my hair better? Up in a ponytail like this? Or maybe straight down like this? Well, which do you like better? I think I like it straight down better, don't you? You think I'm beautiful, don't you?
and he tries to the test tomorrow. Do you think we could do it another way? What do you mean? Let me cheat off your paper. Gina. Todd, what are you doing? I'm finished. Oh, of, of course. But wait until the others are finished before you hold up your answers. I'm sorry, Mr. Burstyn. Hey, you. What's the sudden interest in all the great outdoors? I need a tan. Need a what? A what? I need a tan. <sighs> well, look at me. I look like a tuna fish. All white and everything. You know, you guys could use a little sunshine yourselves. Starting to look real old. God. Dad, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but it's true. I mean, you never take a vacation or buy new clothes. Look at that dress, Mom. Dad, you never do anything for yourselves. Todd. Yeah? Do you ever blame us for bringing you into the world? Did you have a choice? Yes. Well, do you blame yourselves? Mom, Dad, I don't blame you for anything. Honest. I love you. I love you both, don't you know that? I mean, look, if it weren't for what you did, I would have grown up in a hospital. You know, you should hire a nurse from the hospital to take care of me. So then you can go to some place you always wanted to go to. Dad, it would be okay. I'd love it. I mean, just knowing that you weren't spending your whole life on me. Okay? Do it. Sweetheart, I'll meet you outside. Rachel, don't forget to uh, test the backup generator at least once a day. And if anything goes wrong, uh, don't hesitate to call us. Don't worry about it, Faye. We'll be at that number. Bye-bye. Have a good trip. Yeah. Honey, I hope we're doing the right thing. So much could go wrong. Sure we are. This trip is for him, too, you know. I give him a little growing room. I don't feel like he can stand on his own two feet. You know what I think? I think part of the reason he wanted us out of the way was so that he could court his girl. Yeah. Todd? Bye-bye. Goodbye, son. like to do something special. Oh, Todd, really? The way you look at me sometimes, <laughs> honestly. Well, think something. Okay. 
Take me riding with you. Oh, sure. What are you going to do? Just walk out of there? I might. No, dummy. Just help Rachel take me outside so I can watch you. Are you crazy? The two of us would never get you downstairs. Sure. Sure you could. Easy. <laughs> Would you plug me in in the extension? When she does that, would you turn off the battery? Okay. Okay. That's it, Rachel. There you go. Plug it in. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. You can go now. <laughs> Gina, ride for me, okay? Okay. Go around that tree and then jump over the canoe and come back as fast as you can. Gina, you move so fast. What's it feel like to move that fast? Feels like flying. Gina. Ride around me in a circle as close as you can, okay? But what about the cord? Well, what about the cord? You just jump that canoe, you can jump that stupid cord. Well, what about your nurse? Oh, this is the time of the day where she drinks sherry. She'll just sit there and look at the plug. Make sure that it doesn't come out. And then she'll get pleasantly bombed. <laughs> so don't worry about her, okay? Okay. Okay. Thing. I don't know. I got a split. Listen, I'll be back later to help you get inside, okay? Which one is he? Well, that's Tom. Bruce drives a blue Chevy. Is he the one you're going with? Who says I'm going with anybody? What for? I did what you wanted me to do. Now do it.
I told you you looked terrific. Oh, thank you. Can you take the presents and I'll get the bag. Come on, no, no, let's surprise him now. Want to do it now? Yeah. <laughs> it open? Yep. Yeah. Yes. How was it? It's fine. Now, listen, what's this about Gina jumping over you with her horse? Oh, it's nothing. Hmm? Did she tell you that? She drinks. Oh, Todd. No, she probably imagined it. God, that's wicked. Listen, I got something I want to tell you. I want to go to school. Yeah. Well, you are in school. No, I mean, really go to school. Dr. Gunther said he'd set it up if you guys said it'd be all right. Here, look, I'll show you. See? Pretty neat, huh? My goodness. That's ah, got it. Okay, Todd, come on out. Last time, what's the first thing you do when you get to your home room? Thank you, Dimitris. <laughs> the first thing you ding a ling. All right, all right. First thing I do is check the backup tapes. And? And the batteries. Come on, Dad, can't you go any faster? Just leave the driving to me. Okay, listen, the filters and the fans are fine. The batteries are up, but the pressure gauge on the main line reads 75%. Then what do you do? I don't do anything. I just stay there. I get my teacher to go get you, and then you take me home, right? Okay, good. But I want you to check everything on your checklist, every break between classes, or I'll break your arm. All right. Okay. Get your current where you find it. Think of yourself as a rechargeable flashlight. Because you want me to be bright, right? <laughs> Little joke, Dad. Very.
Mr. Brewster? Yes, Gina? I just wanted to say that um, I think it's really brave of Todd to do this. And I think we should all show him how glad we are that he's here. I applied to accept for Yale. No, oh, really? oh, come Glenn, on. I heard you accepted to Colorado. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Did you hear from your art school? No, not yet. Oh, don't worry about it. You hear from it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys, why don't we go over and talk to Tom? Oh, I don't know. Tom. He's really weird. Yeah. He is weird. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Let's speak to him. Come on, I'd rather not. Then don't. Hi, Todd. Hi. Todd, I want you to meet some of my friends. You know Tom and Bruce. And uh, this is Gwen and Debbie. Hi. And Smith. Uh, hey, man, how you doing? I see you got yourself all plugged in. <laughs> Hi. I saw you on the news. You look great. I'm Tom. Uh, no, man, we do it like this. This means we're brothers. How much time do you have on one tank? 90 minutes. And then what? Then I recharge. It's what I'm doing right now. See, I'm recharging. Hey, could I ask you a question? Yes? Do you ever feel like a visitor from outer space? <laughs> yes. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, Ty. We were all about to take a little walk over to the football field. Would you like to come with us? Hey, no more practical jokes. You can trust us. Yeah, I think we've grown up a little since last summer. OK. Hey, when I pull this plug out, would you turn my battery on, that little black dial? OK. All right, when I say ready. Ready? Go. Hey, Todd. Yeah? There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Sure. How do you go to the bathroom? Oh, the same as the astronauts do. You mean? Sure. Sorry I asked. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just can't help it. You look so funny in that face. Little booty. Oh. 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 Todd, it's not you. It's just your suit. Hey, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. I mean, I mean, you got to. It's funny. You <laughs> that little <Yeah>. ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, don't blow a fuse. <laughs> I know what this is like. What? what what's like? I, I know what that's like. Oh. You know what I do? What I do is I, I stare at an object for a long time. Any object, right? 
And then I, I let myself sink deeper and deeper inside my brain until I find this, this center place that I like. Have you guys ever heard of, of out-of-body travel? Yeah, sure. I saw a thing about it on Twilight Zone once. It's where you can leave your body and go anywhere you want. That's right. Well, I do it all the time. Oh, yeah? Where do you go? Lots of different places. But mostly the planet that I'm from, Thermopolis. Right. <laughs> Come on. Thermopolis. Thermopolis. I think it's a, an exchange program. You see, I was sent here, and someone from here was sent there. One day we'll be switched back again. If it weren't for this secret journal I found, I would have never known anything about it. Are you putting us on? No. Let me look inside that thing, Todd Lubitsch. Look at that straight face. <laughs> hey, no! I think you are from another Hey, Tom! I bet you didn't know that uh, people on Thermopolis were stronger than uh, people on Earth. No kidding. Stronger in what way? Just stronger. Like, uh, for instance, I bet I could beat you at doing uh, push-ups. You talking about real money or space money? I'm talking $10. $10. Sounds okay to me. Let's make it the kind that you have to clap in the middle, all right? Hey, all right. Hey. hey, Todd, uh, do you think you should do this? I mean, what about your your air? Okay. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Hey, where's my ten bucks? I gotta talk to you. I know, you're mad at me, aren't you? Yes, I'm mad at you. For embarrassing me in front of your friends? No, for nearly killing yourself, trying to show off for me. But Gina, I was Todd, just... Todd, what if you had died out there? How could I ever live with that? I'm sorry, Gina. No, you're not. You don't care. You don't care what happens to you, Todd. Sometimes I think you want to die. You know, I was just doing it so you'd see. See what? That you're just as dumb as all the rest of them? Flexing your muscles? No, that you'd see that I'm not a cripple. And that there's nothing wrong with me except that I, I can't get out of here until they tell me it's okay. Oh, Gina, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of feeling like a hospital case. Like some weirdo kid who, who can't even breathe normal air because he might get sick and die. 
I just wanted to be like a man. Someone you could care about, not feel sorry for. What you're doing to me. And I don't know if I like it at all. I don't know anything anymore. Look, we were just supposed to be friends. I mean, that's all that was supposed to happen, right? I mean, can't we just, just leave it like that? Obviously, spent a great deal of time with her after I I just wanted to know why. Oh, what are you doing this to yourself? Yeah, hello. Yeah. Last yeah. Yeah. Tell her I it's for you, sweetheart. Sorry, sir. You want to watch the sports news on Channel 3? So you can be pretty persuasive no. when you want to find something out. Hello? Gina? Hi. Um, you want to go to the beach tomorrow? Why couldn't you have had a spacesuit when you were a little kid? Oh, when I was little, I never even dreamed about going out. Only about people and things coming in. You were always riding your horse in. Yeah. And then I'd get on. And we'd ride and ride and ride. Inside your bubble? Yeah, always inside. All my life I've wondered what it's like to be you. And all my life, I always wondered what it was like to be you. I've always loved you, you know.
Johnson, Jr. Peter Justice. Todd Lubitsch. Todd Lubitsch. Todd, what do you want to see me about? I want to know when I can leave, Ernie. Well, within the past week, I've been in telephone communication with a team of physicians in the Soviet Union. How soon could I leave on my own immunities? You know I can't answer that. What would happen if I left now? You're not actually considering... Would I catch something and die right away? I really don't know. You mean I might live? Yes, it's conceivable. Your body's been building up some immunities. But it's also conceivable that just a bad cold or a case of flu might kill you. I'm sorry, but we just don't know. Thank you for coming, Ernie. Todd, if somewhere in that brain of yours, you're actually thinking of... <laughs> I was just asking, Ernie, that's all.
say if we up and ran away from the roaring crowds and the worn out city faces would they carry on and on when they found that we were gone or would they let us go would they tag along or would they know to leave us alone So long we'd live in the country. Leave us alone, we'd make it just fine. Happy in a one room shack, and we'd not look back. I won't miss you to fire in the rain. Head to head, my love, I'll keep you safe. When will our story go? We're all I want. I love is one. 